House Speaker Nancy Pelosi extended proxy voting in the House, which allows members to vote without being present in the chamber due to what they say is the public health emergency of COVID-19. But isn't the pandemic over? The pandemic is over. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. Uh, it's But the pandemic is over. Here to react, Congressman Carlos Jimenez and Congresswoman Marionette Miller-Meeks. Uh, well, welcome to both of you. I'll start with you, Congressman. Uh, what is this about? Because the pandemic's over and they should be getting back to work and to yeah, voting in person. Yeah, I agree. And so one of the tenets of uh, our commitment to America is to make sure that on the first day, the new rules, if the Republicans take over control of the House, is that we eliminate proxy voting and we make sure all Congress congressmen and women are there to vote in person. So I was very happy to be with our leader yesterday in Washington County, Pennsylvania, as we unveiled our commitment to America. And that's one of the tenets of our commitment to right. America. Congresswoman uh, Miller-Meeks, is this really about giving members of Congress more time to campaign in their districts? Is that really what, we're, what Nancy's trying to do here? Because the Democrats need well, to do some more campaigning. They're in trouble. Well, let's be honest. Proxy voting was put in place so that members didn't travel and expose others to COVID-19 if they were COVID-19 positive. And there's only one person that can lift the public health emergency, and that's President Biden. And President Biden said the pandemic is over. I would tend to agree with him. We still are functioning with it. But to have proxy voting continue, as you know, last week, there was almost a vote that the Republicans took because they didn't have members of their own party in. And you know, members of uh, Congress, my colleagues are abusing this practice. Some have voted as far away from uh, France while on vacation. So this is all yeah. about, uh, you know, making sure they have members to vote for the next week uh, and while they're campaigning in their district. Yeah, I mean, that's disgusting. Voting from France um, because of COVID uh, and, and, and you should be in the chamber. Uh, great stuff. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, Republican commitment to America plan. Uh, Congressman, what do you say is the top issue? Um, I know you laid out a, the, the Republicans have laid out a lot of things, but what's the main focus here? Well, there's two things. First of all, on the first day of uh, if we take control of of, uh, of Congress, uh, you know, the federal government should be working for the people, not going after the people. So our leader has made a commitment that the first thing we're going to do is going to eliminate the 87,000 IRS agents that are coming after you and me and everybody else in this country. But really, the the topic that's really number one in, on Americans' mind is inflation, and that is the main topic that we're going to be battling. We are going to lower inflation by stopping the out-of-control spending that the Democrats and the Biden administration uh, are, are doing and, and uh, contributing to the inflation. Uh, we're going to uh, increase uh, the level of better better pay, paying jobs you know across the country we're going to also uh, look at how we can lower energy costs by unleashing American energy there is absolutely no reason why we should be dependent on foreign oil for any of our energy needs uh, and yet the Biden administration continues to wage war against the American energy industry so I think that's the most important aspect of this plan Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi is calling this plan extremist but say you <laughs> Well, I would say the extreme uh, is that there is no plan by the Democrats. They have no plan. Their policies have created tremendous harm to the American people with rising prices, difficulty affording food, and people don't feel that they can trust their government, that their government's not accountable. So our plan, our commitment to America is an economy that is strong, a nation that is safe, a future that is built on freedom, and also a government that's accountable. So we're going to be looking at things, a parents' bill of right, uh, health care that's affordable, but it's not controlled by bureaucrats, but controlled by you and your doctor, making sure that we have the right amount of uh, law enforcement locally uh, that can reduce uh, the uh, you know uprise in crime and uptick in crime due to disastrous Democrat policies. So we have a plan. They have no plan. And what they have done over the past uh, 20 months has created great harm to the American people and created crisis, you know, all the way from our border uh, to uh, our, you know, our national security, uh, to crime, uh, to inflation, uh, to, you know, parents' education of their children. So we're going to make sure that we're listening to people and we can provide them hope. Yeah. Well, I wish you guys luck on that because you could, uh, the Republican House could certainly put the brakes on some of the spending. I uh, want to thank you both for joining us this morning, Congressman, Congresswoman. Thank you.
All Thank right. you so much, Rachel. Okay. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.